Hey, how's it going? So lately I've been getting some question on how to meet a red knight and it's actually a lot easier than you think. So let's get on to the video. So basically when shooting at night, you're gonna need the following. A light meter or a camera that has a light meter. You're also gonna need a high ISO film or a digital camera that has high ISO capabilities. And then you're gonna need a tripod when shooting low ISO film or if your lens isn't fast enough. What I consider fast lenses are those that have an f2.8 aperture or below. So first things first, you need to shoot on the right film suck when shooting at night. I usually choose a film suck that has an ISO rating of 800 or higher. What it means is that the higher your ISO is, the more sensitive your film is. Now if you can't find a film that is rated at ISO 800 or higher, you can always push your film. Just a quick explanation. Pushing film is when you rate your film ISO at a different speed than what the box says. So for example, here I have a Portra 400, which is, you guessed it, 400 ISO film. And I rated it at 800 ISO. That means that I'm pushing this film by one stop. If I rate this at 1600, then I am pushing it two stops. So on and so forth. Just be wary that if you decide to push your film, you have to push the whole roll itself. You can't switch to a different ISO once you start pushing the film. Here are some shots taken on the Fuji Film C200, a film rated at 200 ISO. All of these shots were pushed to 800 ISO, which is a total of two subs. Now there are some pros and cons at shooting high ISO film or when shooting high ISO on a digital camera. The biggest drawback when shooting high ISO film is that it can get really grainy. And when shooting on digital cameras, you're gonna have more digital noise. Also, if you're shooting on a 35mm film, the grain are much pronounced compared to a 645 or a 6x9 medium format. Some people like the look, some don't. I personally don't mind it. I think it adds to the uh, aesthetics. The second drawback comes from pushing your film. To simply put, your lab will charge you extra depending on how much push you have on your film. Now on the good stuff. Usually shooting at a higher ISO, particularly around 1600 to 3200. With a combination of fast lenses, it enables you to do handheld night shoots. Here are some examples of shots that are taken handheld during the night. As I stated earlier, metering at night isn't really that hard. Let me explain. First, you're going to need a light meter. The one I use is the Minolta Spot Meter F. This allows me to pinpoint areas of the scene and meter specifically to that spot, hence the name Spot Meter. Now if you don't have an external light meter, go check if your camera has one. Just be careful that older cameras usually have unreliable meter readings. Well, let's say you're out of luck and you don't have the money to buy an external light meter or your camera doesn't have one. There's actually an app that uses your phone's internal light meter and you'll be surprised how accurate it is. The meter app I use for my phone is this one. It's called Light Meter. I've used this one for the longest time and have gotten great results. Real quick, just a disclaimer. I'm not a professional photographer and I haven't studied photography a whole much. I'm only sharing techniques that works with me. These techniques might work to some and it might not work to others. Earlier I mentioned that one of the requirements when shooting at night is finding an ideal location. What I mean by this is looking for a specific location with a decent lighting. After I find a good location to shoot, I start metering. Usually when I meter for film, I focus on the highlights. The reason for this is that film usually yields higher latitude when it comes to highlight recovery. Here I actually metered for this spot, 
and after metering for the highlights, I get a meter reading stating that I need to shoot at 150th f2.8 at 800 ISO. And then I added about 2-3 to three stops from what the light meter tells me. Well I have two options. I can either open my aperture to 1.5 which adds about 2 stops of exposure to the negative. Alternatively, if I wanted to stay at 2.8, I can reduce my shutter speed from 150th to 115th, which also adds about 2 stops of light to the negative. By adding 2 to 3 stops, you're essentially giving your negative enough information on the shadow. Not much, but just enough. And if you're worried about your highlights, you can usually recover it during post-process. Now, some people like metering for mid grays but I never really understood that concept. Plus, whenever I'm on a scene, it's hard for me to find mid grays whereas it's easier for me to find highlights. That's why I stick to my method. As for digital cameras, I still meter for the highlights, but instead of adding stops to the camera, I just follow what's indicated on the light meter. The reason is, digital camera sucks at retaining detail on the highlights, so as much as possible I do my best to preserve them, knowing that I can always recover shadow later on. Here's an example. Here, I actually focus my meter on this section of the photo. What it gives me is a photo that is underexposed, but you can see there's still detail on the highlights. And after that I just recovered the shadow on Lightroom. In some situations where you might not want to compromise your image quality or maybe you're stuck at a lower ISO, then a tripod is definitely necessary. By shooting at a lower ISO at night, you'll get a cleaner image. For film, the grain structure is more refined. And for digital, you get less noise overall. It's also a good idea to use a self-timer when shooting on a tripod to avoid camera shake. Or, if your camera doesn't have a timer, you can buy a cheap cable release. Now here are some things considered when shooting on a tripod at a lower ISO at night. You're pretty much stuck doing long exposures, and sometimes it can get annoying. So there's this thing called reciprocity failure, and for digital shooters you don't have to worry about this. Basically, according to this website, quote, Reciprocity failure is what happens when a longer exposure, generally shutter speeds of 1 seconds or more, the law of reciprocity, you guessed it, fails. I don't know what that means, but if you do, please explain it to me like I'm 5 on the chat below. Anyways, on the bright side, you don't need to learn all of that. All you need to do is that you need to take extra steps when doing long exposures at night. So there's an app that I use on my phone called Reciprocity. It has most of the database of the reciprocity failure of certain film stocks. Here for example, first thing we do is to input our film stock, say Portra 400. I usually leave my factor to zero unless you're using neutral density filter. And then both of the bellow tube sections, I leave it as is. Then in the measured exposure, Input the readings from your meter. So for example, my meter reading is 30 seconds. According to the reciprocity calculator, in order to get a proper exposure, I would now need to shoot at 1 minute and 28 seconds. Just be wary that not all film stock have the same reciprocity failure, so make sure you choose your film stock before calculating on the app. Here are some shots taken from a lower eyes to film, and as you can see it's a lot cleaner. Before I end this video, I want to add something. You really need to trust your meter. I know it's hard, especially for those who shoot on film because you don't see your photos right away, but you really need to trust your meter. And last, do your own experiment. Don't just commit to a project not knowing if you know your meter techniques are accurate or not. I hope that's been informative. Um, shooting at night is something that I really enjoy. There's just something soothing about going out there, you know, looking for shadows, looking for cool lightings, and looking for a specific mood. As usual, if you like this video, you know, leave a comment, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram. And 
I'll see you guys in the next video.